Back when we were kids, my close circle of friends were into a lot of things. Aside from loving the usual stuff like He-Man, G.I. Joe, and Transformers, we were huge fans of dinosaurs, mythical beasts, Vikings, Norse mythology, Greek mythology, and of course, animals. Hawks, eagles, falcons, dogs, wolves, anything with a talon, claw, or fang, we were there. And of course, we loved cats. But not your typical house cats, big cats, lions, tigers, cheetahs, and of course, my all-time favorite, the jaguar. So, you can imagine how Hasbro got me hook, line, and sinker when they showed me Ravage. After watching the very first Transformers miniseries way back in 1984, I'm pretty confident in saying that one of the most unforgettable characters etched in almost every kid's brain was the Decepticon communications officer, Soundwave. I mean, what was there not to love? The guy spoke in this ominous, monotonous, and heavily effects-laden voice. He transformed into what was arguably one of the most coolest gadgets of the time, a Walkman, and he literally had his own personal army of minions that he could shoot out of his chest. Just like burgers and fries, mac and cheese, peanut butter and jelly, hell, peanut butter and chocolate, you really can't have Soundwave without his minions. These little dudes were every bit as memorable as their master. The Condor's laser beak and buzzsaw were definite terrors from above, raining down destructive fire on unfortunate Autobots below. The two little punks, Frenzy, who was red, and Rumble, who was blue, were always in your face creating the most destructive chaos with their respective twin pile drivers. And Ratbat was, well, a bat, not a rat. But for me, the most unique and dare I say deadliest member of the bunch was the Jaguar, Ravage. See while Laserbeak and Buzzsaw got you from a distance, and Rumble and Frenzy were all about inflicting the greatest amount of damage around them, Ravage was none of these. Lurking in the shadows, waiting for the perfect time to strike his enemies. Precise, close up, and personal is how Ravage operated. If you wanted to take down a specific enemy, quick and clean, Ravage was your guy. I mean, cat. And even if he didn't quite look it, Ravage has always been identified as a robotic jaguar. Now you would think that the lowest hanging fruit would have been to make him a lion or a tiger, but for me, making him a jaguar was perfectly fine. Even if they aren't the largest, jaguars are considered to be, pound for pound, one of the most dangerous big cats out there. Their name comes from the indigenous word jaguar, which means he who kills with one leap. And no, it's not their leap that actually kills you, but their bite, clamping down and crushing your skull. A jaguar's bite is widely considered to be more powerful than any other big cat. Their teeth are strong enough to bite through the thick hides of crocodilians and the hard shells of turtles. I mean, these guys were worshipped as gods in many ancient South American cultures. So yeah, the jaguar is awesome. And what could be more awesome than a jaguar? A freaking robotic Decepticon Jaguar. Anyway, like I said in the cartoon, Soundwave and company definitely made a huge impression on me. But of all of them, it was Ravage who was my instant favorite. Sure, he didn't do much except get caught by the Autobots and bully a couple of humans. But as far as I was concerned, he didn't need to do anything substantial. Just exist and be cool. And speaking of cool, his toy was one of my favorites as a kid. Yes, I know that all he did was transform into a rectangular cassette tape and that he was practically a two-dimensional toy. But from the side, this guy had an awesome profile and great articulation that even beats out some of his more modern versions. Now, while the original cartoon didn't really do much with Ravage, he did manage to distinctly set himself apart from his fellow Cassetticons in the annals of Transformers lore when he made a surprise return in the successful 90s Transformers revival series, Beast Wars. While looking nothing like the original Transformers show featuring robots that transformed into organic, well, beasts, Beast Wars was set in the same universe as the original cartoon, just taking place centuries later and featuring descendants of the Autobots and Decepticons, the Maximals, and the Predacons. 
Anyway, seeing that Transformers had considerably longer lifespans than us flesh beings, it's no surprise that original G1 characters still existed and were brought into the show every now and then to spice things up. We had the ghost of Starscream return to possess a poor Waspinator. And most notable of all, we had the triumphant return of the Decepticon, Ravage. As the story goes, Ravage was one of the few Decepticons who was granted amnesty at the end of the Great War and was reformatted into a Predacon. No longer a four-legged snarling beast, Ravage now had a new bipedal human form. Although he did retain his jaguar head and now spoke in what could be best described as a Russian accent. Anyway, Ravage is initially sent by his superiors, the Tripedicus Council, to capture the rogue Predacon leader Megatron. And so he makes his way to prehistoric Earth where, thanks to the help of another agent acting as a mole in Megatron's team, Tarantulas, manages to successfully capture him. However, the cunning Predacon leader manages to sway Ravage to his side by appealing to his very strong loyalties to the original Megatron, convincing him that he is merely carrying out the orders and plans of Ravage's former commander. Unfortunately for Ravage though, this new partnership with new Megatron is short-lived as the Maximals manage to destroy Ravage's ship with him in it. But of course, not before Ravage manages to transform into his original cassette tape alt mode and insert himself into the ship's control panel. And ultimately, when faced with certain death with a raging explosive inferno headed his way, he defiantly stands tall and shouts, Decepticons forever. So yeah, it was quite the memorable return that ended in a blaze of glory for the former Decepticon. And if anything, at the very least highlighted one very important facet of Ravage's personality, and that was his unwavering loyalty to the Decepticons, and more specifically Megatron, who he saw as the embodiment of the cause. And this loyalty was truly put to the test in the IDW comics, where they did the unthinkable and made Megatron switch sides and join the Autobots. Okay, so I believe I'm kinda getting a little ahead of myself here. Before we go any further, I'd like to take a quick detour and ask, no, invite you all, my lovely viewers, to take part in something new that I'll be rolling out for the channel. So do you like cool perks like shoutouts, badges, early access, and exclusive videos? I'm talking about like first impressions, collection tours, updates, and whatever unscripted ramblings come to mind then why not try joining my channel as a member? Yes, I know all this will cost you a teeny tiny bit, but I remain committed to making sure it will be all worth it for you and your hard-earned dollar or two. And I will continue to add even more perks down the line as soon as I figure them out. As always, it's a little thing that will go a long way to help me grow my channel. But either way, rest assured, everything else Currently on the channel, the regular stories that you've been enjoying will remain as is. This is just a little something extra, so hope you can maybe give it a shot. Just like Megatron, join me and my cause of telling great toy stories. So yeah, Megatron, Autobot. Well, okay, so to start things off, as established in this IDW continuity, the Decepticons, or more specifically Megatron, wasn't always the evil villain that he was traditionally depicted as. In fact, Megatron was actually the product of a very archaic and oppressive system, and he started the Decepticon movement as a response to this corrupt system, to break free of it, and if necessary, destroy it, to build something better. In fact, it was this mission and vision that led Ravage and company to join Megatron. Prior to meeting Megatron, Ravage along with Buzzsaw and Laserbeak wandered the streets of Cybertron and it was here that they met another lost Transformer named Soundwave, who was suffering from his inability to control his unique mind-reading powers. Being an expert in mastering overactive senses himself, Ravage helped Soundwave control his ability which led to a long and lasting friendship. Anyway, you know how all of this turned out. Somewhere down the line, Megatron and the Decepticons lost their way. And after millions of years of destruction and warfare, Megatron took a long hard look at himself and realized that he did not like the monster that he felt that he had become. Hence, 
the change of heart. At this point, the Great War had ended, but there were still splintered and broken factions of Decepticons trying to find their way without their leader. Anyway, Ravage was sent by Soundwave to keep close tabs on Megatron to confirm if his switch in allegiance was genuine and, if it was, to terminate him. However, after an encounter with the violent Decepticon Justice Division, or DJD, led by the ruthless Tarn, as well as a heart-to-heart talk with a former Decepticon leader, Ravage was convinced enough to see that Megatron was sort of right in concluding that the Decepticon cause had lost their way, and instead joins him. Not necessarily as an Autobot, but as part of Megatron's crew. After a number of adventures with Megatron's Autobot crew, Now, how odd does that sound? Ravage finally met his end when he was savagely torn in half by Tarn himself. Megatron ultimately avenges Ravage by killing Tarn and his DJD squad and manages to be at Ravage's side before he expires. Before his death, though, Ravage gestures to the dead Tarn's mask, which was a Decepticon insignia that Megatron had hanging on his chest, and with his final words utters to Megatron, Don't change back, referring to his old Decepticon ways. And just to drive his death home, light years away, even Soundwave senses his old friend's passing. A very memorable and touching way to go, fitting for such an OG character, which is a whole lot better send-off as compared to what his live-action version got. Ravage was one of the big new additions to the second Transformers live-action movie, The Revenge of the Fallen, wherein he is dispatched by a satellite sound wave down to Earth to breach the defenses of an army base and literally barfs out another Decepticon to steal a shard of the Allspark that is used to revive a fallen Megatron. And after that oh-so-memorable scene, he returns in the final end battle where he is graphically dispatched by Bumblebee as the Autobot literally rips his entire body from his spine and tail. Well, apparently, according to some supplementary comics, he actually survives that encounter. But whatever. If it didn't happen in the big screen, it doesn't count in my book. Anyway, while this Ravage wasn't really a Jaguar per se, he was close enough. I remember his alienish, spiky, cyclops cat-looking mode that transformed into a nondescript flying thing, being one of the most sought-after toys of that Revenge of the Fallen toy line. I was living in Singapore when the first wave of Revenge of the Fallen toys were released and remember hurriedly going through one of the local department stores amidst all the other collectors. But for the life of me, I just couldn't find myself a ravage. Dejected. I turned around to leave when I came face to face with a nice old sales lady who without saying a word, smiled at me and handed me a ravage. It was so surreal. I had no idea how that kind auntie knew I was looking for ravage. Well, I suppose everyone was looking for ravage. Or why she held on to that particular one or why she chose to give it to me. Actually, I must have looked quite pathetic with only the awful Chromia and Skids toys in hand. But whatever the reason, it was like mana from heaven. And speaking of which, I had another feel-good story regarding another Ravage toy a year prior. As part of 2008's Universe line, an updated G1 Ravage was released as a pack-in with the Autobot Hound. So upon its release, Hound was a highly sought-after toy and I had a hell of a time looking for this guy. After numerous toy hunts around the city, I finally found him amongst the chaos of a huge toy sale in one of the bigger malls in Singapore. I had already scoured that exact area a few hours earlier with no luck. And before heading home on a whim, I decided to take one last look. And lo and behold, I found one lone piece that somebody probably decided to return. It was a pleasant surprise that I remember distinctly until now. And granted, he was more of a pack-in, this Ravage was pretty awesome itself as it was the first modern version of Ravage that transformed from a tape into an actual three-dimensional Jaguar. Granted, it had less articulation than the original version, it was still quite a feat of engineering for its time. And, dare I say, beats out a lot of the other Ravages that have come out since. So just like Soundwave, whose Walkman alt mode went out of style after the 80s, so did Ravage's cassette mode. And so later toy releases of Ravage had him transform into other communication or data-related stuff, like an actual functioning USB drive, 
or a data disk, uh, a rectangular thing, and even a data pad that actually converted into a jet. So how about that? Triple changer ravage. Of course, you also had more traditional ravages, like from Takara's masterpiece line, or third-party company Robot Paradise, uh, fans toys, who gave us classic G1 ravages that transformed into cassettes. Obsolence be damned. And we also got cute little ravages from the Siege and Earthrise lines, which had alt modes oddly referred to as shields, although we all know they are still tapes. But I would have to say that my favorite modern renditions of Ravage were the ones that took a cue from his newer Beast Wars version, which incidentally also got a nice modern release. Like the original vintage version of this toy, the new Beast Wars Ravage was also a rather extensive retool of Kingdom Cheetor and came released with a nice vintage Ravage, which was a nice touch. Anyway, this new humanoid Ravage served as an inspiration for the Alternator's Ravage, which was basically another retool of a previously released character, Trax. Painted black, with a Ravage head, and transformed into a real sleek convertible Corvette. Although, if you ask me, my absolute favorite Ravage toy in my collection would be the second Alternator's Ravage released, before the line officially ended. And what a way to go out with a brand new unique Alternator's Ravage that transformed from his familiar Big Cat mode into an officially licensed Jaguar XK car. Come on, you have to admit, it doesn't get even more awesome than that. Imagine a sleek black sports car racing straight at you at full speed and then all of a sudden transforming into a ferocious mechanical beast. A Jaguar that turns into a Jaguar. It doesn't get any better than that. Now this is a version of Ravage that will definitely not go out of style. And speaking of style, if you want a story about another stylish Transformer, why not check out this jazzy guy over here? Or if you want something else other than Transformers, you can check out stories from another galaxy far, far away over here. Either way, thanks for watching and hope you come back for more.